the Acts of the Apostles of Jesus Christ, a former account I made of Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the Apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during the forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power, and the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. When he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up at the heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will also come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And they returned to Jerusalem from the mount at Olivet which is near Jerusalem, the Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room, and they were staying Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples altogether. The number of many was about 120 and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke for by the mouth of David concerning Judas and became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and attained part in this ministry. Now, this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and fallen headlong. He burst open in the middle of all his entrails gushed out and it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem so that the field is called in their own language, Akel Dama. That is the field of blood, for it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed to Joseph, Carbosibus, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen. Take part in this ministry of apostleship, which Judas by transgression fell, and he might go to his own place. And they cast the lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered. 11 apostles. Now, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a loud sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them in divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this second occurred, 
The multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each one in our own language in which we were born? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, and Jordan Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others mocked and said, They are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, and this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven, above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your mind, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, crucified and put to death. And God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand and I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, all flesh will also rest in hope, because you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Man and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day, therefore being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God had raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, but he himself said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. 
and with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. On that day, about three thousand souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold the possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continuing daily, with one accord, in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, laid from his mother's womb, was carried, and they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at what you receive from them. And Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sent the begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he resounded to the people, men of Israel. Why do you marvel at this? Why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration in all things which God has spoken by the word of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things. Whatever he says to you, it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes. And all the prophets from Samuel to those who follow, as many as have spoken have also foretold these days, you are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. 
However, many of those who heard the word believed. The number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together in Jerusalem. When they had been with them in the midst, they asked, By what power, what name have you done this? Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to the helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you all. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, what a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem and cannot deny it. And so, that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to no man in this name, called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, and let them go, finding no way of punishing them, because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God, who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. And by the mouth of your servant David, and said, Why did the nations rage, and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly, against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now, the multitude of those who believed of one heart and one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common, and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there any one among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Jose, who was also named Barnabas, 
of the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. A certain man, named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie with the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why? If you can see this thing in your heart, you have not lied to men, but to God. Then Aeneas, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So a great fear came up among them all who heard these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out and buried him. Now, it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. And Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. And immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, and buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord on Solomon's porch, and none of the rest dared join them. But the people esteemed them highly, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, and at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands and the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught the high priest and those. And with them they came and called the council together and all the elders the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely, and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. And one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. When they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us? Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things and so also to the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and took counsel to kill him. Then one of the council stood up, 
a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, they just rose up claiming to be somebody, a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered, came to nothing. And after this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, unless you even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Now, in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then twelve, summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Procorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch whom they set before the apostles. When they had prayed, they laid hands on them, and the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue, freedmen, Tyrians, Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council looking steadfastly at him saw his face as the face of an angel. Then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Men and brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran. And he said to them, Get out of your country and from your relatives and come to the land that I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he moved him to this land in which you now dwell. And God gave him no inheritance in it not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him. But God spoke in this way, that his descendants would sojourn in a foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and oppress them 400 years. And the nation to whom they will be in bondage, I will judge, said God. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Then. He gave him a covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day 
and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him, and delivered him out of all his troubles, and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine and great trouble came over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And the second time Joseph was made known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to the Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all his relatives to him, seventy-five people. So Jacob went down to Egypt, and he died, he and our fathers, and they were carried back to the Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham brought for a sum of money from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew near, which God has sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they might not live. At this time, Moses was born and was well pleasing to God, and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. But when he was 40 years old, he came in his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him and was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. And the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and trying to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brethren. Why do you wrong one another? But he, who did his neighbor wrong, pushed him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then at this saying, Moses fled and became a sojourner in the land of Midian, where he had two sons. When forty years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight, and he drew near to observe. And the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. And the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off for the feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have certainly seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning, and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? is the one God sent to be a ruler, and to deliver him by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush, who brought them out. After he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years, this is that Moses, who said to your children of Israel, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren, him you shall hear. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, that one to receive the living oracles to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey, but rejected. And in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. As for this, Moses, who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idols, rejoiced in the works of their own hands. And God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer me slaughtered animals and sacrifices during forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? Yes, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Rimfin, images which you made to worship, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. 
Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he appointed instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land, possessed the Gentiles. And God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob, but Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet said. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised, and heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of angels that have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed them with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen. As he was calling on God, and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And he had said this, he fell asleep. As Saul was consenting to his death at that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout man carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city, to Samaria, and preached Christ to God, and the multitudes with one accord, he did the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city, but there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming, that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And they heeded him, because he had accomplished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. And when the apostles, who were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, he had fallen upon none of them. Only, had only been baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Then. They laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that, through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, and that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this, you wickedness, and pray, God, that perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. 
See, if you were poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken may come upon me. So when you have testified and preached the word of God, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages to the Sarmatians. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, the eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, he was returning, and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet, then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and to sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he opened not his mouth, and his humiliation and his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and he, beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you say, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in his altars. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till they came to Caesarea. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground, and then heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he trembling and astonished. And Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord said to him, Arise, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground. When his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas, one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias 
went his way and entered the house and laid his hands on him. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately thereafter fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. When he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Then all the world were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on his name in Jerusalem? And has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests. But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews, and dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Now, after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down through the wall in a large basket. When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, and not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. He spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed against the Hellenists, but they attempted to kill him. And the brethren found out, and they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him out to Tarsus. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and were multiplied. Now it came to pass, as Peter went through all parts of the country, that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydia. There he found a certain man named Aeneas, who had been ridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately. So all who dwelt at Lydia and Syria saw him and turned to the Lord. In Joppa there was a certain disciple in Tabitha, which is translated Dorticus. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had watched her, they laid her in an upper room, and since there was near Joppa, the disciples heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to him, implored not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with him, and he had come. They brought him to the upper room, and all the widows stood by weeping, showing the tunics and garments that Dorcas had made as she was with them. And Peter put them all out, and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he called the saints and widows, he presented her alive, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa with Simon, a tanner. There was a certain man, it says we called Cornelius, a centurion, what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man, and one who feared God with all his household and gave alms generously to the people, and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly a vision of an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. When he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? He said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now, send man to Joppa, and send to Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon and Tanner whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to him, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. 
about the sixth hour, when he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open to an object like a great sheep bowed at the four corners descending to him and the down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild bees, creeping things, the birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again a second time. What God has cleansed you, you must not call common. This was done three times. And the object was taken up into heaven again. Now, while Peter wondered with himself what this vision, which he had seen, meant, behold, the man who had been sent from Cornelius made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore go down, go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation, and of the Jews was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. And on the next day, Peter went away with him, and some brethren from Jonah accompanied him. And the following day, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them, and called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. And Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one another nation? But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked them, For what reason you sent me? And for me, they said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Job and call Simon, here whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately. And you have done well to come. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, when they killed and hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him open, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead, to him all the prophets witness. And through his name, whoever believes in him receive a measure of sins. While Peter was still speaking, these words the Holy Spirit fell upon all, those who heard the word, and those of the circumcision, who believed were astonished. As many as came to Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles. 
for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water? That these should not baptize but have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Now, the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. When Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, You went to the uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in the trance I saw a vision, an object ascending like a great sheep, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came to me. When I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the great voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. He told us all he had seen, and an angel standing in his house, who said to him, Send man to Joppa, and call for son, whose surname is Peter. I will tell you the words by which you and all your household will be saved. And I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning, when I remembered the word of the Lord, and now he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. And some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene. And when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose and heart that they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And in those days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. And one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people at the Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself, 
empowering your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gates that lead to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to him, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. There many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, the cause of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. They said to her, You are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, It is an angel. Now Peter continued knocking. When they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go tell these things to James and the brethren. He departed and went to another place. Then as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. And when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea as Caesarea had stayed there. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. And if they came to him with one accord, and having made blasts the king's chamberlain, a friend, they asked for peace, because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on that, said they, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel on his throne, gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, The voice of God, not of a man. And immediately an angel of the Lord struck him, because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem, and they had fulfilled their ministry, and they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there was a certain prophet and teachers, Barnabas Simeon, who was called Nigeria, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work of which I have called them. They, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. No. When they had gone through the islands of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimus the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who also was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, fool of deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of the righteous, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now, indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time, and immediately dark mist fell on them, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed. When he saw that this had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord, now when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, they came to Perga, and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returning to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, 
and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and motioning with his hands said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he brought them out of it. Now for a time, about 40 years, he put up with their ways in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations, in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to them by allotment. After that, he gave them judges for about 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterwards, they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up for him David, his king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. From this man's seed, according to the promise of God, raises up for Israel a Savior, Jesus. After John had been preached, before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not he, but behold, there comes one after me with sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to lose. Men and brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, those among you who fear God, to you the word of this salvation has been sent. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets, in which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause for death in him, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. Now, when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. He was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people that promise, which was made to the fathers. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he was raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second Psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you, and that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has spoken thus. I will give you the sure mercies of David, therefore, he also says in another psalm, You will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried in his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man he preached to you the forgiveness of sins, and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you should not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken the prophets come upon you. Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, the one word to declare it to you. And when the Jews went out to the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation had broken up, Many of the Jews and the devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. And when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blasphemy. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold said it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, and since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you to be a light to the Gentiles, and you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as been appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief man of the city and raised a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from that region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. 
and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And I call you. Yet they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Both the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews, with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of La Hacunia, and to the surrounding region. And they were preaching the gospel there. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up, straight on your feet. Up and walked. Now, when the apostles saw that Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in the Iconian language, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. In Barnabas, they called Zeus and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. When the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you, and preach to you that you should turn from these vain things to the living God, who made the heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are in them. O Lord, my own generations, not all nations, to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, did not leave himself without witness, and that he did good gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and saying, We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. So, when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord, in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through Pasidia, they came to Pamphia. Now, when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. And when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. And a certain man came down from Judea and taught the brethren, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So being sent on their way with the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all the things that God had done with them. And some of the sect of the Pharisees believed, rose up, saying, It is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So the apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter. When they had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Man and brethren, you know what is good. A while ago, God chose among us and by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you taste God by putting a yoke on your neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor you were able to bear? We believe, 
through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul and declared how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men, brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And through the words of the prophets, agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up, so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who were called by the name, says the Lord, who does all these things, known to God from eternity and all his works. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those among the Gentiles returning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath, and that then pleased the apostles and the elders with the whole church send a chosen men of their own company to Antioch, Paul, one of his name, the Judas, who was also named Osanus and Silas, leading men among the brethren. They wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders of the brethren, who the brethren who are the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of you went out for us and troubled you with words, and suddenly you saw saying, You must be circumcised to keep the law. To whom we gave no such commandment, it seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you, who died with their law and spirit, and who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent you us and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from the things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourself from these, you will do well. Farewell. So, when they were sent off, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Now Judas and Silas themselves, and the prophets also, exhorted the brethren with many words and strengthened them. And after they had stayed there for a time, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. Then after some days, Paul and Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. Paul insisted that he should not take with them one who departed from them, Alphelia, and had not gone with them to do the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. When Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God, and he went to Syria and to see his strength in the churches. And he came to Derby and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed. But his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted him to go on with them. So he took him and circumcised him because the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to him the decrees to keep which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily, forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mycenae, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Therefore, selling from Troy, 
We ran a straight course to Samothrace, the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city, that part of Macedonia, a colony, and we were staying in that city for some days. Then on the Sabbath day, we went out to the city, to the riverside, where prayer was customarily made, and we sat down and spoke to the women and met there, and a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, the worship God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she constrained us. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination in us would rob her master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of it that very hour. And when her masters saw that their hope for profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace of the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, be it Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them. The magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And they had laid many stripes on them, and they threw them into prisons, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet on the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, and at the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keepers of the prison awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, Supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul, he called out with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and all of your household. Then they spoke the words of the Lord to him, and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and immediately he and all of his family were baptized. Now, when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the officers, saying, Let those men go. So the keeper of the prison reported, these words to Paul say the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned Romans, and have thrown us into prison. And now do they put us out secretly? No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. And the officers told these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and pleaded with them asked them to depart from the city. So they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they encouraged them to depart. Now, when they had passed down the people of this in Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures explaining and demonstrating that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews, who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace, and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, sought to bring them out to the people. When they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. 
Jason has harbored them, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let him go. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went to the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those of Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness, searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed. Not also only a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned what the word of God was preached by Paul of Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. And immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea. And both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul sought to him at Athens, and receiving the command from Silas and Timothy to come with him, with all speed they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him. When he saw that the city was given over to idols, therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers, and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. And certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered them, and some said, What does this man but want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods, because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. They took him and brought him. Aeropagus say, may we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak? For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. And all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Aeropagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you were very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God, therefore, to one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped in man's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives love to all breath and all things, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of the habitation, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move, and have our being, as also some of you own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, in these times of ignorance, God overlooked but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a time in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance this to us all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from them again. However, some men joined him and believed him. Among them, Dionysus, the Arapagate woman named Demarius, and others with them. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. He found a certain Jew, Achilla, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them. So because he is with the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, and by occupation they were tent makers. And as he reasoned in the synagogue, every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks, when Silas and Timothy come from Macedonia, Paul was constrained by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ, but when they opposed him and blasphemed, shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered a house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then 
Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. And the Lord spoke to Paul in the night of my vision, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in the city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Now, when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, and the Jews, with one accord, rose up against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuades men of to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Malio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or wicked crime, O Jews, there would be reason why I should bear with you. But if it is a question of words and names and your own law, no touch yourselves, for I do not want to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks, Sothenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. Galileo took no notice of these things. So, Paul still remained a good while. Then, he took leave of the brethren and sailed to Syria, Priscilla and Aquila, and they were with him. And he had his hair cut off at Cynthia before he had taken a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he also entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay a longer time with them, he did not consent, but took leave of them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, I will return again to you, God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed in Caesarea and gone up and greeted the church, he went down to Antioch. After he had spent some time there, he departed and went all over the region of Galatia and Phrygia in order for strengthening all the disciples. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Though he knew only the baptism of John, so he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Achille and Priscilla heard him, he took him aside and explained him the way of God more accurately. And when he desired to cross to Kia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed the grace, for he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. And it happened, while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John indeed baptized with baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men who were about twelve in all, and he went into the synagogues and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. When some were hardened, and not believed, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. This continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greek. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them as the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took up upon themselves and called the name of the Lord Jesus over those who are evil spirits, saying, We adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of Ziva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man, in whom the evil spirit was, leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. 
and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So, the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed the Macedonian Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia. Those, or two of those, ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. About that time, there arose a great commotion about the way, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines, and Sonia brought a small prophet to the craftsmen, and called them together with the workers of similar occupation, and said, Man, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul is persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship. When they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristarchus, and Sidonians, and Paul's travel companions. And when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples were not alone. And then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some thereafter cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused. But most of them did not know why they had come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude of the Jews, putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, and all with one voice cried out about two hours, the greatest Diana of the Ephesians. And when the city clerk inquired the crowd and said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is the temple garden of the great goddess Diana? and the image which fell down from Zeus. Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here, who are neither robbers, temples, nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in lawful assembly danger of being called in question for today's uproar. There be no reason which may give an account of this disorderly gathering. And when they said these things, he dismissed the assembly. After the uproar had ceased, Paul called the disciples to him, embraced them, and departed to go to Macedonia. Now, when he had gone over that region, he encouraged them with many words. He came to Greece, stayed three months. And when the Jews plotted against him, he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return to Macedonia, and Salvatore of Berea accompanied him to Asia, and also Aristarchus, Secundus, the Thessalonians, Gaius of Derby, Timothy, Antiochus, Trophius of Asia. And these men, going ahead, waited for us in choice. But we sailed away by Philippi, after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days joined the Troy, where we stayed seven days. Now, the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many laps in the upper room, and they were gathered together at the windows of a certain young man named Eotipus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, but as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But well, Paul went down, fell on him, embracing him, and said, do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now when he had come up, he had broken bread and eaten, and talked them no longer, even until daybreak, and departed. And they brought the young man in, alive, and they were not a little comforted. Then he went ahead to the ship and sailed to Assos. 
there intending to take Paul on board, for so he had given the orders intending himself to go on foot. And when he met us at Assos, we took him on board, and he came to Mentally. We sailed from there, and for the next day he came opposite of Chios. The following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at Trogilium, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus, so he would not have to spend time in Asia. Or he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. To Miletus, he sent to Ephesus, and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility and many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. And I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you, and taught you publicly, and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to the Greeks, the repentance towards God and the faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And, see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dead of myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord. And Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God, and indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherds the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, and after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not spare the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, and draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone, night and day with tears. Now, brethren, I commend you to go in the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all things who are sanctified. I have covered in no one silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who are with me. I have shown you in every way, by laboring like this, that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they should see his face no more, and accompanied him in the ship. And the hunt came to pass. And when we had departed from them and set sail, so, running a straight course, we came to Kos. The following day at Rhodes, and from there to Patera. And finding a ship sailing over Phoenicia, we went aboard to set sail. So. When we had sighted Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed to Syria, and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unload our cargo, and finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. When we had come to the end of those days, we departed and went on our way, and they all accompanied us with wives and children, till we were out of the city. We knelt down on the shore and prayed. When we had taken our leave of one another, we boarded the ship, and we returned home. And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, we came to Ptolemus, greeted the brethren, and stayed with them one day. And the next day, we, who were Paul's companions, departed and came to Caesarea, and entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied, and as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt, and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go to Jerusalem. And Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound and also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So, when he would not be persuaded, 
who deceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days, we packed and went up to Jerusalem. And some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us and brought with them Manasseh and Cyprus, and they the disciple with whom we were to lodge. And then we had come to Jerusalem, and brethren received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in and led us to James, and all the elders were present. And we agreed to them and told in detail those things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said to him, You see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed, and they all are zealous of the law. But they have been informed about you, yet you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought to circumcise the children in order to walk according to the customs. What then? The assembly must certainly meet, for they will hear that you have come. Therefore, do what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them and be purified with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads and that they may know that those things of which they were informed concerning you are nothing, but that you yourselves also walk quote, orderly and keep the law, but discerning the Gentiles who believe that we have written and decided they should observe no such thing except that they should themselves from things offered to idols from blood and things strangled and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, having been purified with them, entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, which taught an offering should be made for each one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Man of Israel, help, this is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law. In this place, and furthermore, he also brought the Greeks into a furthermore, the temple has defiled this holy place, where they had previously been of Trophimus and Ephesians with him in the city when they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple and all the city was disturbed and the people ran together, seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple and immediately the doors were shut. Now, as they were seeking to kill him, news came from the commander of the garrison that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when he saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped meeting Paul. Then the commander came near, took him, commanded him to be bound with two chains. And he asked who he was and what he'd done. So among the multitude cried one thing and some another. And when he could not ascertain the truth to cause the tumult, commanded him to be taken into the barracks. And when he reached the stairs, he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. But the multitude of the people followed after him, crying out away with him. And as Paul was about to be led into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I speak to you? He replied, Can I speak Greek? And are you not the Egyptian who some time ago raised up an insurrection and led the 4,000 assassins out into the wilderness? Paul said, I am a Jew from Tarsus, and a citizen of no mean city, and I implore you, permit me to speak to the people. So when he had given him permission, Paul stood on the stairs and motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great silence, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, saying, Men, brethren, and fathers, hear my defense before you now. And when they heard that, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language. They kept all the more silent. Then he said, I am indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus of Sicilia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our father's laws, and was zealous toward God as you all are today. I persecuted this way to death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest bears me witness, and all counsel of the elders, from whom I also received letters to the brethren, and went to Damascus, to bring in chains even those who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. Now it happened. As I journeyed and came near Damascus, and about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me. 
When I fell on the ground, I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now, those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. I wanted not an instant about man, according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there came to me, and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. At the same hour I looked at him, and he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you, that you should know his will, and see the just one, and hear the voice of his mouth. For you will be witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it happened, when I returned to Jerusalem, and I was praying in the temple, and I was in a trance, and saw him, saying to him, Make haste, and get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they have not received your testimony concerning me. So I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by, consenting to his death, and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then. He said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And they listened to him until his words. And then they raised their voice and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out, and tore off their clothes, threw dust in the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks, and said that he should be examined and discouraged, so that he might know why they shouted so against him. And as they bound him with wrongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? And the centurion heard that. He went to the commander, saying, Take care what you do, for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. The commander answered, A large sum I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, But I was born a citizen. Then, immediately, those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. The commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. The next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews, he released him from his bonds, and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear, and brought Paul down and set them before them. And Paul, looking earnestly at the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience for God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall, for you sit to judge me according to the law, and you do command me to be struck contrary to the law. And those who stood by said, You revile God's high priest. And Paul said, I did not know, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of the ruler of your people. For when Paul perceived that one part was Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, concerning the hope and resurrection of the dead. I am being judged. And when he had said this, an ascension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. And the Sadducees say, that there is no resurrection, no angel or spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Then there arose a loud outcry, and the scribes at the Pharisees' party arose and protested, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. When there arose a great dissension, and the commander, fearing lest Paul might be pulled to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down, take him by force from among them, and bring him into the barracks. And at the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. And when it was day, some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under the oath, 
saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. Uh, there were more than 40 who had formed this conspiracy. They came to the chief priests and the elders and said, we have bound ourselves in a great oath. We will eat nothing until we have killed Paul. Now you therefore, together with the council, suggested the commander that he be brought down to you tomorrow. So you are going to make further inquiries concerning him. Are we all ready to kill him before he comes near? And when Paul's sister's son heard the ambush, he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. And then Paul called one of the centurions to him and said, Take this young man to the commander, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the commander and said, Paul, the prisoner, called me to him and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to say to you. And the commander took him by the hand, went aside and asked him privately, what is it that you have to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask that you bring Paul down to the council tomorrow. So they were going to inquire more fully about him. But do not yield to them, for more than 40 of them lie in wait for him, men who have bound themselves by an oath that they will neither eat nor drink until they have killed him. And now they are ready from you. So the commander let the young man depart and commanded him, tell no one that you have revealed these things to me. And he called for two centurions, saying, prepare 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea. And at the third hour of the night, provide mounts to set Paul on and bring him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter in the following manner, Claudius Lysias, the most excellent governor, Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews, he was about to be killed by them, coming with the troops I rescued him. I have been learned that he was a Roman, and when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before the council. I found out that he was accused concerning the question of the law, but had nothing charged against him worthy of death or chains. And when it was told to me that the Jews lay in wait for the man, I sent him immediately to you and also commanded his accusers to state before you the charges against him. Farewell. When the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris, the next day they left the horsemen to go with them and returned to the barracks. When they came to see Syria and delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. When the governor had read it, he asked what province he was from. When he understood that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will hear you and your accusers also have come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's Praetorium. Now after five days, Ananias, the high priest, came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. And he gave evidence to the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began his accusation, saying, seeing that though you we enjoy great peace and prosperity as being brought to this nation by your foresight. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. For we have found this man a plague, a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sects of the Nazarenes. He even tried to prefer the temple. He wanted to judge him according to a law, but the commander of Lysias came by, and with great violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you. By examining him yourself, you may ascertain all these things to which we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, and maintained that these things were so. And then Paul, after the governor, nodded to him to speak, and said, In as much as I know, that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because you may ascertain that it is no more than twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone, nor inside the crowd, neither in the synagogues or in the city, nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept. And 
there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and man. Now after many years, I came to bring alms and offerings to the nation, in the midst of which some Jews, the Asia found me purifying the temple, neither with a multitude nor with tumult. They ought to have been there before you to object if they had anything against me, or else let those who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the council. Unless it is for this one statement which I cried out standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead, I'm being judged by you this day. But when Felix heard these things, having a more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, When I see this, the commander comes down and will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and let him have liberty. And he told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for a visit him. And after some days, when Felix came with his wife, Priscilla, who was Jewish, sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have convenient time, I will call for you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul, and he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversed with him. And after two years, Paul's success this succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to get the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. Now, Festus had come to the province. After three days, he went out from Thessalonica to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief priest of the Jews informed him against Paul, and they petitioned him, asking a favor against him, that he would summon him to Jerusalem, while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. And Festus answered that Paul should be kept in Caesarea, and that he himself was going there shortly. Therefore, he said, If those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man, to see if there is any fault in him. And when he had remained among them, Ten days, he went down to Caesarea. The next day, sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Paul to be brought. When he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. And he answered for himself, Neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar have I offended anything at all. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning these things? And Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews, I have done no wrong, as you very well know. For if I am an offender, I have committed anything worthy of death. I do not object to dying, but if there is nothing to these things of which these men accuse me, no one can deliver them to me. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, and conferred with the council answer, You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. When they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There's a certain man left a prisoner by Felix, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem asking for a judgment against him. To them I answered, it is not the custom of Romans to deliver any man to destruction before the accused meets the accusers face to face and has the opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Therefore, when they had come together without delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation against him of such things as I supposed, but had some questions against him about their own religion and about one Jesus who had died from Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain of such questions, I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. And when Paul appealed to be reserved for the decision, Augustus commanded him to be kept till I could send him to Caesar. And Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear. So the next day from Agrippa, and Bernice, 
They had come with great pomp and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city. At Festus' command, Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men are here present with us. You see this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned you, both in Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord concerning him, therefore I have brought him out before you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, that you may, after the examination has taken place, that I might have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner not to specify the charges against him. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself, before you concerning all things for which I am accused by the Jews, especially because you are expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which is spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first. They were willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise, our twelve tribes, earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain for this hope's sake. King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself, and I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints. I was shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, being exceedingly enraged against my person, even to foreign cities, while thus occupied. And I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. At midday, when king along the road, I saw light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me. Those who journeyed with me and had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So I said, who are you, Lord? I said, well, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which you will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people, as well as from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witnessing both the small and the great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead, and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now, as he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. But he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king, before whom I also speak freely, knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention. Since this thing was not done in the corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become 
both almost altogether such as I am, except for these chains. When he had these things said, the king stood up, as well as the governor and Bernice and all those who sat with him. And when he got aside, he talked among himself, saying, This man is doing nothing worthy of death or chains. And Agrippa said to Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. And it was decided that they should sail to Italy and deliver Paul and some other prisoners, one named Julius, centurion of the Augustan regiment. So entering the ship of Adramatium, we put to sea, meaning to sail along the coast of Asia, Aristarchus, Macedonia, Thessalonica was with us. And the next day, we landed at Sidon. And Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him liberty to go to his friends and receive pair. When we had put the sea from there, we sailed under the shelter of Cyprus, as the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea, which is also Syria and Philia, we came to Mara, the city of Mysia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy, and so put us on board. And we had sailed slowly, many days, and arrived at difficulty of Canidus, the wind not permitting us to proceed, and we sailed under the shelter of the Crete, or Salmon. Passing it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens, near the city of Lacia, knowing much time had been spent. The sailing was now too dangerous because the fast was already over. Paul advised them, saying, Man, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo of the ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman than the owner of the ship and by the things spoken by Paul. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail. From there also, if by any means, they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete opening toward the southwest and northwest, and winter there, when the south wind blew, softly supposing that they had obtained their purpose, putting out to sea, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, a tempest had when the rose called a girl like it. And when the ship was caught, they should not head into the wind, and let her drive. And running under the shelter of an island called Clada, he secured the skiff with difficulty. When they had taken it on board, they used cables to undergird the ship, fearing lest they should run aground at certain sands. They struck sail and were driven, and because we were exceedingly tempest tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. On the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. Now, when neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood up in the midst of them and said, Man, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, man, for I believe God, and it will be just as it was told to me. However, we must run aground on a certain 